Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day 410, April the 25th, 2018. Wednesday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Well, of course on Wednesday, I take out the trash and I eat chicken every Wednesday. I take out the trash and I eat chicken. Tonight, it was one of those uh, rotisserie chickens along with some stuffing, some green beans, some rolls with copious amounts of butter and chocolate milk. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Towergate. You're going to be glad you did. We're now getting more information. And in the last couple hours, in the last 24 hours or so, there's been a flurry of things coming out about Alexander Down the Hatch Downer. Another guy who, who may be sweating because he has come into this game and he wasn't supposed to. And now he may be facing some liability because we're told now that it was his conversation with Papagalopoulos and then he informed, allegedly, he, reform, he informed his Australian uh, State Department which then informed some agency of the U.S. government. We assume it was someone in the U.S. State Department who then probably informed the FBI or CIA or someone. But that's basically the chain. And we have to at some point start asking the question, did Papagalopoulos actually say what Downer claims Papagalopoulos said? Papagalopoulos was convicted of lying six times to the FBI, to Mueller's people, about the conversations he had with Misfit and Million. Why wouldn't he lie about the conversation he had with with uh, Downer? And I've never heard it anywhere or seen it anywhere where he was even asked if he told the truth or if he even had that conversation. That was not in that briefing that was released for us to read about the charges. It only talked about the charges and, and the individual lies that he told, which said nothing about Downer. I don't even recall if Alexander Downer was even mentioned in that report. I may have to go back and read it again. I saved it in my files. But this newest story is coming out, and we're learning that, in fact, it was Alexander Downer, Down the Hatch Downer's associate, a female, who contacted Papagalopoulos to set up that meeting with Down the Hatch Downer at that London bar. So apparently it wasn't just like they bumped into one another. Oh no, that was a meeting that was set up by Down the Hatch Downer's female associate. And apparently Papagalopoulos was turned on to her and Downer through an Israeli official, state department, sort of a state, uh, Israeli state government official is the one who apparently got them hooked up. And apparently the meeting was requested by Downer, Down the Hatch Downer, because apparently Papagalopoulos, while in London, wrote an article which was published and it was criticizing Theresa May and suggesting that she needed to apologize to Trump for comments that she had made. Now this would have been right about the time that Trump clinched the Republican nomination. And he was saying things like, you know, Trump, I mean, Trump says what he thinks. He was, of course, supporting Brexit and anyone opposed to Brexit, uh, and including Theresa May and others. And of course, I think he mostly was criticizing her because of the migrant crisis and things and such going on in, in, in Europe. I think that's primarily what his criticism of her was, was based on the migrant issue and also the Brexit issue. So apparently what happens is Papagalopoulos writes this article. It gets published. Who published it? Why they published it? How he would get published? I don't know. Maybe because he advertised himself as a uh, person who was a member of the Trump campaign. And that certainly would have got him some notoriety and some, some cred, enough to get an article published. So he publishes this article, apparently that's critical of Theresa May, suggesting that she needs to apologize to Trump. 
This apparently is what sparked the call from Down the Hatch Downer's female associate who called and said, hey, Mr. Downer would like to talk to you. And they scheduled the meeting at that bar, I assume, in London. One of our commenters, one of my subs has been there. He lives in the UK. And uh, apparently in that meeting, Downer got very stern with Papagalopoulos and told him, back off of Theresa May. Back off. So, what was first sold is a drunken, sort of good time drunken uh, conversation in a London bar where they just maybe happened to bump into one another, now turns out to be a scheduled meeting, a set up meeting. And it wasn't such a friendly meeting apparently because uh, Down the Hatch Downer set the meeting, if you believe uh, this story, which I believe originated in the Daily Caller, um, if you believe this story that the purpose of the meeting was for Down the Hatch Downer to jump down Papagalopoulos' throat and tell him to back off Theresa May. Hmm. What does this tell us? Well, it tells us, uh, obviously, that Down the Hatch Downer is a big fan of the EU, of Theresa May, and not a big fan of Trump. We know that Down the Hatch Downer was a big-time Australian diplomat who held a position equal to the Secretary of State. We know he is connected to the intelligence community and the underworld. We know that he works for a private intelligence firm that's known for being very, very cloak and dagger. We know he has ties to British intelligence. He probably knows the Clintons very well. We know for a fact he's in three separate pictures from three separate times with Bill Clinton. And in one of them pics, he looks pretty young, like it was maybe 15, 20 years ago. He had dark hair. The most recent picture, he's got gray hair. <clears throat> so obviously he's known Clinton for a long time. <clears throat> maybe going back to when Clinton was president. We also know that he was an associate He was a, an associate of the Clinton Foundation. And the only way you get to be an associate of the Clinton Foundation is if you bring a lot of money in. Hmm, that's interesting. And the last we heard on Papagalopoulos was that some sources who know him personally, who say he's keeping a pretty low profile these days, he's recently married, but he apparently is now back in Chicago because he got married somewhere. I guess he's in Europe. His wife is European. She's an Italian lawyer. But now apparently he's back in Chicago, keeping a very low profile. And he has confided to some sources who know him personally who say that he, he contends that there was no Russian collusion and that uh, the Trump campaign was not involved in any Russian collusion. And uh, he's just keeping a very low profile. Still has never been sentenced. His sentence has been put off indefinitely. <clears throat> was he bribed, persuaded, blackmailed, or threatened, or something to keep his mouth shut? Did that conversation ever even happen? Did Downer simply plant that information? He had the meeting with Papagalopoulos and chewed him out for taking on Ter uh, Theresa May. <clears throat> and then when they needed it, he threw out the story saying that in that conversation, Papagalopoulos mentioned uh, that the Russians had emails or dirt on Hillary. Remember, this was all happening, that conversation, about the time that everyone was trying to find those 33,000 emails that the rotten reverend had deleted, bleach-bitted, and all the rest. That's the context. More questions need to be asked of Mr. Downer. And he did a follow-up interview after this story ran, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's move on next to the uh, story that I was talking about yesterday. Really good, two really good articles in the American Spectator over the weekend. Um, I don't know how many of you read the American Spectator, but it's really a, a good website. There's some really good writers there. George Neumayer, um, George Perry, 
uh, both do very well. A couple other people do very well. Really good website. And uh, on Sundays, I, 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 I read quite a few of the stories from that site. So they have some good people over there. But this was a very good story by George Perry. And the, the, the jux of the story is the title is uh, McCabe is going to cut a deal. Bad for Comey. And, of course, we talk about this all the time here on Towergate. Other people have <clears throat> suggested this. But it's just the context that he writes the story in. And he talks about something that I think uh, we haven't really thought too much about. And that is putting ourselves into the shoes of Andrew McCabe. Here we have, as he points out, James Comey getting a multi-million dollar advance for his book. Now he's traveling around, giving speeches, talking about his book, making lots of money, going on media uh, TV shows, um, playing himself off as this uh, more moral superior uh, individual uh, who has these great leadership qualities and is this stellar human being of some sort. And, oh, by the way, McCabe is a liar. Yeah, he lied. And he's a nice guy, but he lied. And they're very hard on people who lie. The whole time, you've got to have McCabe sitting back, pulling his hair out. Got to be mad as hell. Got to be mad at Comey. Right now, they have a major dispute where Comey is saying that McCabe never advised him of those Wall Street Journal, uh, the Wall Street Journal leak, the story. McCabe is uh, adamant, saying he did brief Comey multiple times. He did know and apparently got the evidence. Well, if they had the evidence that the, attorney, the inspector general certainly wasn't impressed or else they didn't show it to him, one of the two, maybe they're waiting for a court hearing to get, McCom to get Comey up there uh, testifying, let Comey say what he's going to say and then come up and produce the evidence that makes him a liar. But the bottom line is, McCabe can't not be very happy with the situation. Comey's out there making tons of money. He's apparently seeming to be in no trouble, but he really is. And um, he's getting all these accolades from the media, making all this money, doing all this, and basically saying, yeah, well, Andy, I like Andy, but he lied. You know, And this has got to be really... Uh, upsetting uh, McCabe. He, he's got to be very, very upset about this, and that's uh, uh, something we certainly have to keep in mind. But as is pointed out in the article, it will be nearly impossible for the U.S. attorney not to bring charges against McCabe because uh, of the charges that were brought against Flynn. You can't bring the charges against Flynn for lying under oath, and Papagallopoulos, by the way, and then turn around and allow McCabe to walk when what he did was actually lie about something much worse. He told four lies, two of them under oath. And there's many more things that we don't even know that the IG has, that the U.S. attorneys are probably looking at. I see no way in the world that McCabe doesn't get indicted on this count and soon many other counts to come for other things that we are going to learn regarding the email investigation, the Clinton Foundation investigation, the insurance policy, the coup, the FISA warrants, the whole nine yards, the frame-up. He's headed for a lot of indictments. And, as the point is made, at some point, when the indictments are filed and the legal fees are piling up, McCabe's attorney is going to tell him, look, man, I'm going to be honest with you. It's all about the evidence in court and what you can prove. And right now, Mr. Horowitz and the U.S. Attorney, they got a very good case. Now, we can go work on the jury. I can try to put doubt into their minds. I can do some uh, magical tricks up there in the courtroom. But quite honestly, Andy, when the uh, thing's all said and done, the facts are gonna be, are gonna rule the day on this in court. And you might be best served to cut a deal. You can maybe eliminate all your jail time probably pay some fines, but you're going to have to come up and you have to cough up something big and you're going to have to probably turn on Comey and his boss Lynch, maybe Yates and some others, maybe the president. You're going to have to drop the goods, Andy. It's either that or you're probably going to jail for a long time and you're going to end up uh, with a lot more legal, a lot more debt than you can handle. Maybe the best move as your lawyer, I recommend you, Andy, that you cut a deal. I absolutely agree 100% with this. It's exactly how I think it will play out. It's how it always plays out. Put yourself in that situation. Are you going to go to jail and be bankrupted? 
while everyone else gets off the hook, believing that you were scapegoated, believing that your boss blatantly lied, and that's why you're going to jail, and his boss covered for him, and also put you in this legal liability. You're just going to take the rap for them. They're going to walk and you're going to do time. I don't think so. It's not what most people would do. It's not the natural thing to do. Self-preservation is the natural thing to do to save your neck. And when McCabe is finally staring down at real time in prison and legal fees mounting, his attorney is probably going to make this recommendation and I think he'll take the deal. Well done. Well, <laughs> I told you a couple days ago <clears throat> about this New York Times reporter who was covering the Clinton campaign. She was there for the whole thing, beginning to end. Traveled with Hillary everywhere. She was on Hillary's plane everywhere it went. She was there for every press conference, there for everything including mock debates, and she was there the night that Hillary lost the election. And apparently her book is uh, going to rattle quite a few people and anger quite a few people as well. It's already started angering one person named Chelsea Clinton because now there are excerpts from the book coming out. So, as these excer excerpts are coming out, uh, <clears throat> Chelsea Clinton, getting the heads up, got on Twitter and started attacking Cholzik. Now, the funny thing about this is, is that Chelsea trying to defend her parents is kind of rich, considering she doesn't even know who her parents are. Her parents did not raise her. Bill and Hillary did not raise Chelsea. Chelsea was raised by Arkansas State Troopers, who were her babysitters, and nannies. Arkansas State Troopers and nannies raised Chelsea who goes by the last name Clinton, but really shouldn't go by that name because that's not her real father. But Webster Hubble is her real father. Chelsea Hubble should be her name. But the book claims that the rotten Reverend Clinton melted down during a debate prep session and that apparently the rotten Reverend went on a, quote, fuck-laced tirade, unquote, about what a disgusting human being Trump was and how he didn't deserve to even be in the arena. Also, that the Rotten Reverend, uh, she says that the remarks about deplorables was not a one-off statement, but that the Rotten Reverend had been using that as a well-rehearsed joke that she had been telling her rich friends every chance she had. Can't wait for that book to come out. The dishonorable James Comey has hired big shot attorney, US, former U.S. attorney, now defense attorney, Patrick Fitzgerald. He, of course, is the, um, he, of course, is the, was the prosecutor who uh, went after uh, Cheney, Dick Cheney, and ended up uh, bagging Scooter Libby, working for James Comey. Now, he's working for James Comey again in a different capacity. I imagine the first thing Mr. Fitzgerald's going to say is, cancel your book tour and shut your mouth. He took on a loser. <clears throat> because Comey is going to do, the IG is going to recommend criminal indictments for Comey. He did um, transfer classified information, uh, leaked it to the media, there's several different violations involved here. And uh, when that all works itself through the system, Comey is going to be indicted, and that's why he brought on Patrick Fitzgerald. You don't bring on a heavy hitter like that unless you're going to need him in court. His attorney he has right now is more of a PR attorney. Patrick Fitzgerald is a trial lawyer. When you bring in Patrick Fitzgerald, it's because you plan on going to court and you need legal defense. My guess is 
he's getting a dossier together on McCabe and Lynch. In his defense of Comey, there's no way to defend what Comey did, so what he has to do is try to find some way to pin what Comey did on someone else. He was forced to by his boss, Loretta Lynch. He was tricked into it by McCabe, the dupe. They're going to make Comey out to be this dupe who was just going along believing everybody was doing the right thing because they're all wonderful people and they all serve the wonderful FBI and he got duped and bullied. He got bullied by Loretta Lynch and he got duped by Andy. That's the only defense he's got. It's not going to work, but they're going to give it a hell of a try. The jury in D.C. could be pretty dumb, you know what I mean? Uh-oh. Those deleted Rotten Reverend Clinton emails from the State Department are to be released by September 28th or September of 2018, according to the rulings of a judge who just finished the ruling on the case. Now, these are State Department emails that Congress has been trying to get a hold of, and uh, they have been having a difficult time. They finally had to go to court. The judge has finally heard the case and ruled. And these things are going to come out, these deleted Rotten Reverend Clinton emails from when she was uh, Secretary of State, are now going to be released no later by court order than September 2018, just in time for the 2018 elections. Oh my goodness, that should be fun. But this is even more important. This is the bombshell story of the day. Are you ready? The Department of Justice is to release within the next 24 hours. In other words, by the time you see this video, they'll probably be out. The DOJ is now prepared to release the missing page struck texts within hours. These are the texts that members of Congress uh, in these committees doing the investigation and Judicial Watch and others have been trying to get their hands on. They were first told, oh, well, they were lost. Remember that? They were lost. But then the IG, Horowitz, the custodian, found them a week later. And he has given them all over to the DOJ. But they didn't want to turn them over. They've been doing everything in the world. Rodenstein has been doing everything in the world, along with no shit Sherlock Christopher Ray, to keep us from seeing those page struck texts. Now, this is from the period of December 2016 to May 17th, 2017. Very important period. But now it appears, according to both Sarah Carter and Tom Fitton, they have just learned that these will be released within the next 24 hours. Now, Rodenstein had to know this was going to happen. It wouldn't have happened without him. Probably under threat of um, impeachment or being held in contempt, he had no choice. The clock was running out. Now we understand why he decided to argue that case and step aside and let the um, Solicitor General take over for a few weeks while he argues this case at the Supreme Court. He wants to get out. Rosenstein, in case you haven't noticed, is now looking for a way out without being fired because he knows that's coming or being forced to step down. He wants to leave for other reasons. He still is in some criminal liability, but nonetheless, it tells us why now that he wanted to step away and uh, turn it over to the Solicitor General for a few weeks while he argues this case at the Supreme Court because he knows when these texts come out, we're going to learn a lot of things. We're going to learn a lot more about the details of the insurance policy. We might learn something about the frame-up. We'll probably learn things about the cover-up We'll probably get interesting things about uh, um, how the Mueller investigation was put together and whether or not there was some sort of collaboration there. There's a lot of things that could be very, very damning that could come out of here. I mean, they've been fighting not to release this stuff for a long time. First, they said they were lost. Then once they finally got them from the IG, they've held on to them and refused to turn them over. It took threatening them with real serious action to get them to finally do it. Then Rodenstein takes a pass two days before. I'm thinking there's some really bad stuff going on here. And uh, this could end the Mueller probe. And if it shows that there was some collaboration 
between um, Rodenstein, Comey, and Mueller, wow, that could mean even worse. That means Mueller could find himself as a criminal defendant. Certainly along with Rodenstein, maybe even Ray. So these texts that they have not wanted us to see are coming out tomorrow. We'll see how redacted they are. We'll see what we learn from them, but we're going to learn something. Look what we've already learned just from a few of the texts from Page and Strzok. But these are the goodies because of the time frame. Things could get very interesting tomorrow, buddies. Sarah Carter was also stating that sources are telling her that McCabe may have given a stand-down order on the Rotten Reverend Clinton FBI investigation into the emails in her server. Well, if you can find proof of that, uh, and that would take more than just McCabe, he couldn't do that on his own, that would have to come directly from Lynch. McCabe couldn't make that call. McCabe and Comey would have to know about that. That would take Loretta Lynch telling Comey to tell McCabe. McCabe wouldn't do that on his own. He couldn't do it on his own. No, that's a call that would be made by the uh, Attorney General, not by the Deputy FBI Director. That call would not even be made by the FBI Director. It would be made by the Attorney General. Then given to the FBI Director and tell him, hey, whoever's running this investigation, tell him to shut it down. If they got proof of that, or if they can get McCabe under oath in a criminal hearing to admit to that, to say that, my oh my, man oh man, you talk about a <laughs> talk about lowering the boom. That could get very ugly, very ugly, and it could very likely happen. We'll see. We know for a fact that McCabe uh, had a was involved in a email chain where he was uh, talking about the fact that he was being pressured by the DOJ to uh, not dig into the Clinton Foundation investigation. I don't know if he said let it go or don't do it, but certainly was being pressured to back off the Clinton investigation by fit officials at the Department of Justice. We don't know their names, but I'm sure in a court hearing, in a deposition uh, hearing, that uh, we will learn that, who it was. We're going to learn a lot of things from Andrew McCabe. I'm telling you, Andrew McCabe is going to be singing the tune and he knows a lot of things. He was at the center of all of it. That's right. He better get some security around him. He's a dangerous man to a lot of people. The NRA has broken their 15-year fundraising record. Well, as you know, about a month and a half, two months ago, on uh, Monday, on a Monday, I announced that David Hogg, the young Fuhrer, uh, their young Fuhrer, I announced that he would be made gun salesman of the year. I think probably David Hogg, the young Fuhrer, uh, has uh, promoted the sale of firearms like nobody since Obama. Absolutely amazing work that he's done, and now you can only credit David Hogg, the Fuhrer, for the 15-year fundraising record of the NRA. Congratulations, Mr. Hogg. Job well done. Keep it up. We're also hearing these rumors, which I talked about, I think, yesterday or day before, that Rodenstein is also being uh, receiving a lot of offers. We know one for sure from, uh, was it CBS, I think? I think it was, yeah, I think it was CBS offering Rodenstein a contract. Uh, we also had at least one, maybe two high-powered law firms in D.C. offering Rodenstein a contract to go to work for them where he'd make a lot more money and he wouldn't have to put up all the pressure and, and heat he's taking. We're now hearing that CNN is offering Rodenstein a position as a pundit. He can be, go over there with his good buddy, uh, uh, Clapper. And I think his other buddy, Brennan, is over at MSNBC. 
as a uh, paid pundit. So I honestly believe that Rodenstein knows that when the IG report comes out, he's going to be forced to resign anyway. He might be best advised to resign now and say, hey, I had a great job offer. Things are pretty hot around here. I'm under a lot of heat. The Congress is always up my butt. The president's tweeting about me. It's just this job isn't, it's very stressful now. I'm not enjoying it anymore. I think it's time to move on. The president would prefer it. Maybe the country would prefer it. I don't know. It's time for me to go. Thank you very much. Exit stage left. He gets his attorney and waits for the indictments to hit. And we'll see who he turns on. Like I said about two weeks ago, Rodenstein's time is limited. Limited. Question is, if he leaves for whatever reason, will Sessions also go? It can't be fun for any of them guys. They're under a lot of pressure, <laughs> under a lot of heat, and they're not real popular right now. So, we'll see. Russian government sources are now confirming that Mr. Potato Head, John Brennan, did visit Moscow in March of 2016. He met with the Federal Security Service, formerly a part of the KGB. And he met with someone else who they will not disclose. And, th and they say it had nothing to do with Syria. Hmm. They also say that Brennan, Mr. Potato Head, was working with Senator Magoo to set up Trump long before the 2016 election. What do the Russians know? Wow, I know one thing they know. They know they didn't give Julian Assange any emails. They know that for sure. We know that Rand Paul was trying to block Pompeo for Secretary of State. Finally, when the vote got down to it and they really needed his vote, Trump called him on the phone and said, what do I need to do, Rand? I know you like me. I like you. We like each other. It's all good. But why are you blocking my guy? You're making me look bad. What is it you want? And apparently Rand Paul told him. And so, based on that, they have an agreement between the two, a promise from Trump that he's going to work with Rand Paul to accomplish a couple things Rand Paul wants. Number one, an end to the wars in Pipelinistan and Syria. Ending the wars in Pipelinistan and Syria. And to reform FISA. <laughs> I've seen Rand Paul's FISA reform bill. It basically forces uh, the FISA court to get an actual warrant based on actual probable cause. It basically neuters FISA, the FISA court process what it does, essentially. We'll see how that goes, but uh, congratulations, good work, Rand. He had me sweating there for a minute. I was thinking, man, don't hold up the president on this one. I know you're a man of principle, but I just thought, Rand, there's certain fights that you pick. This is not one of them. Not now. Not right now. Pick another fight on another day. Wrong hill, wrong time. But apparently he hung in there, and I guess he got what he wanted. So I guess we have to congratulate him there. And it looks like uh, Pompeo will be confirmed. So I recently, uh, I was telling you at the beginning of the video that uh, Alexander Down the Hatch Downer had recently appeared on ABC Net, uh, or, or that Downer had recently been uh, talked about in this story uh, at the Daily Mail about telling us how that meeting was set up with, uh, and why it was set up so that Downer could uh, jump all over Papagalopoulos for making that statement about Theresa May. Well, then it's followed up with an interview by Alexander Downer, Down the Hatch Downer, who had recently appeared on ABCnet.730, which I assume is a British TV network or radio network, and he would not confirm or deny that he even met Papagalopoulos in that London bar. He would not confirm or deny either. That is amazing. He was asked, he was not asked about his relationship with the Clintons, but we do have three pics of him and Bill over a period of years. And we know he was a Clinton Association uh, Foundation associate. Wow. What is bringing Downer 
out of the woodwork? What's bringing him out of the shadows? What's going on with Alexander down the hatch downer? Hmm. We'll give that some thought. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow. Because have a good night. Goodbye.